The microwave oven is a remarkable feat of engineering, designed to heat food using high-frequency radio waves. However, when exposed to such waves, certain particles in the food may become charged. In theory, if these charged particles entered the body, they could pose serious health risks, including cancer. It is important to understand that a microwave can only heat food containing water molecules. For example, a completely dry chapati will remain cold inside the oven. At the heart of a microwave lies the magnetron, which generates high-frequency radio waves. Operating at 4000 volts DC, it is the main power source of the oven. We will explore its working later, but first, let's see how it uses these waves to heat food. Consider this. How is heat actually produced? If you rub your hands quickly, they begin to feel warm. This warmth is caused by friction. In electrical engineering, resistance plays the role of friction. Voltage drives the electric current forward while resistance opposes it, producing heat. Traditional bulb heaters become extremely hot because their high resistance converts electrical energy directly into heat. In conventional ovens, a heating plate at the top produces heat through high resistance. This heat travels through the air to warm the food, but much of the energy is lost in the process. As a result, these ovens need high power and achieve only about 10 to 20% efficiency. In conventional heating methods, heat travels from the outside towards the inside, which often leaves the inner portion of the food cold. Modern ovens work on a different principle. If high friction can be created within the food itself, it will heat from the inside. This greatly reduces the power loss that occurs between an external heating plate and the food. Let's look at the heating principle of a microwave. Take a burger as an example. When heated, the bread on both sides is only mildly warm, but the potato onion filling inside becomes very hot. Any slices of onion or tomato in the filling will also heat up quickly. Interestingly, the paper plate beneath the burger will remain cold. So how does this difference in temperature occur? In reality, foods rich in water molecules heat the most. A water molecule consists of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms, set at an angle of roughly 104 degrees. Here, the hydrogen atoms act as positive charges, and the oxygen atoms as a negative charge. When energy is supplied from an external source, these atoms become charged. A charged particle holds energy, causing it to rotate or vibrate. It is, in fact, the magnetron that supplies energy to these water molecules, delivering it in the form of waves. The magnetron emits multiple electromagnetic waves, each containing electric and magnetic fields. The electric field makes the water molecule vibrate, creating friction, which in turn heats the food. When a water molecule rotates under the influence of the electric field, a change in the field's direction forces it to reverse its rotation. Other molecules behave the same way. The magnetron emits extremely high frequency waves at 2.45 GHz, making water molecules rotate at that rate each second. This rotation creates friction, producing heat that warms the food. However, there is a problem. The food heats unevenly. Some areas become hot while others stay cold. For instance, if you heat a large piece of chocolate in a microwave, you may find parts of it melted while others remain solid. This happens because the electromagnetic waves in a microwave form standing waves that oscillate over time. At the wave's peak, energy is high enough to melt chocolate, but areas where the energy doesn't reach remain unchanged. This makes even heating difficult. Before solving this, we must understand how a wave becomes a standing wave. Normally, a wave travels forward using its energy. So how can it stay oscillating in one place? In reality, the wave emitted by the Megatron is not a standing wave. It is a traveling wave that moves forward continuously. But consider this. The wave that heats the food continues traveling beyond it, wasting energy. If we could redirect this energy back towards the food, the oven's efficiency would rise, and heating would be faster. To prevent this loss, a metal plate is placed in the wave's path. When struck, the wave reflects and travels back in the same direction. The problem is the wave continues to travel. Now, if we observe what happens when two such waves meet at a certain point, we find they can be completely out of phase, meaning one wave is at its peak, 
while the other is at its trough, because they are in exact opposite positions, their energies cancel each other out, and the result at that point becomes zero. However, if the wave shifts slightly, the two waves add together, increasing the net energy. When we observe only the net energy of these two waves, it appears as though a standing wave is oscillating in place. When the wave reflects from the front reflector, another reflector on the magnetron side, aligned with the wave's cross-section, reflects it again, producing the same type of wave. Between the two reflectors, waves bounce back and forth repeatedly. In effect, only two waves appear, moving in opposite directions, whose combined effects form a standing wave. This is why the microwave oven is designed in a box shape, known as a resonance cavity. Think of it this way. When you shout at a wall, your voice bounces back. As the echo returns, you shout again, and both sounds combine to become louder. The same effect occurs inside the oven. When the two waves combine, they form what appears to be a standing wave. The wave's peak melts certain parts of the chocolate, while others remain unchanged. To solve this, a rotating plate is placed at the base of the microwave. As the food turns during heating, it receives heat evenly. Here's an interesting question. With the frequency spectrum, is microwave radiation the only type that can heat food? X-rays with their shorter wavelength should in theory heat food even more effectively. However, there is a problem. X-ray photons carry so much energy that they break apart water molecules. Instead of heating, this damages the food and may make it radioactive, posing severe health risks such as cancer. On the other hand, waves with much longer wavelengths barely interact with food. They simply pass through. This makes microwaves perfectly suited for heating. Microwaves do not break water molecules or make them radioactive, making them completely safe for us. However, if the waves emitted by the magnetron come into direct contact with the human body, they can damage body cells. In the case of a microwave oven, the food heats evenly on both the inside and the outside as the waves penetrate 3 to 4 centimeters into it and then continue to transfer heat further, ensuring the food is properly heated. In practice, the magneton operates at 4,000 volts DC. A large transformer first steps up 220 volts AC to around 2,000 volts AC. This is then converted to DC by a diode and a capacitor boosts the voltage further. Such high voltage causes the magnetron to produce significant heat. It is fitted with multiple heat sinks and a fan inside the oven helps keep it cool. The precise process by which a magnetron generates high-frequency waves is a complex piece of engineering, which we can explain in another video if requested in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any doubts, drop them in the comments. I reply to every single one. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.